Hey everybody, Tactical Angel here, back on the PlayStation 5, ignore the intro, to take a look at another premium ship in World Warships Legends. This time it will be the Tier 5 Premium Italian Cruiser, Duca d'Aosta. For this review, I'll start with some history, move into analysis, discuss the commanders, run down your stats with you, and of course we'll finish off with a bit of gameplay. If you do want to skip around at all though, you should see some time codes down in the description. The full name of the ship we'll be talking about today is the Emanuel Filiberto Duca d'Aosta. This is one of those Condottieri class warships built for the Italian Navy during the lead up to World War II. As I imagine in my review of the Luigi di Savoia Duca degli Abruzzi history, the Condottieri class of ships actually came in with five generations, with somewhat similar characteristics, but considerably different specifications. Without repeating too much of that video, I will suggest that perhaps you give that video a little watch if you want to know a little bit more information about the individual ships. Suffice it to say though, the Duca d'Aosta is the fourth generation of cruiser, which puts it neatly in between the Monte Capulli and the Duca degli Abruzzi, with the two ships of the Cadorna subclass not being represented in the game. The Duca d'Aosta was the lead ship of the fourth generation of Condottieri class ships for the Italian Navy. She was named after Emmanuel Filiberto, Duca of Aosta, who served with some distinction with the Italian army during the First World War, helping to retake Gorizia from the Austrians. The ship herself was laid down in October 1932, which would have been immediately after the Duke's death earlier that year, launched in April of 1934, and was commissioned into service in July of 1935. Her first task was initially intended to be a circumnavigation of the world, and the Duca d'Aosta got as far as South America along with her sister ship, the Eugenio de Savoia, whose namesake is the same person as Prince Eugen, before the Regia Marina, since that war was in the air and called them both back to the Mediterranean. Upon outbreak of war, she partook in the Battle of Punta Stilo, the first significant battle between the Italian Regia Marina and the British Royal Navy. Not much came of this particular engagement, just some relatively minor damage to both forces, but it was a bit of a blemish on the reputation of the Regia Marina, who had hoped to make something of a real effort into dominating the inner sea in the interwar period. It was another six months before her next significant engagement, when she was part of the Italian force that lightly challenged the convoy M42, Again, not much came of this, other than Malta got resupplied and the Italian fleet made its way to Libya. Fast forward another half year and Operation Harpoon was underway. And depending on who you ask, this was either the Battle of Pantelleria or the Battle of Mid-June, where she may not have won individual glory, but she was part of one of the more successful operations of the Regia Marina, which largely turned back the attempts to resupply Malta in this particular case, and even sunk a cruiser, five destroyers, and half a dozen transports at the cost of the Trento, though some of the supplies still slipped by, and that would help to keep the Commonwealth Island in the fight. For the rest of the war, mostly in between events I've described here, the Duca d'Asta performed the lion's share of her service, which was on patrols and convoy escorts to and from North Africa, around 20 of these in total. Like most of the Regia Marina, her activities were greatly hampered by the same fuel shortage that plagued the rest of the entire service. Following the Italian capitulation, she would sail from Genoa to La Spezia and join the majority of the Italian fleet and headed to Malta for surrender. Following the war, she was taken by the Soviet Union as a war prize. Here she would be sailed under the name Z-15, Stalingrad, and Kerch in the Black Sea Fleet. She was decommissioned in 1953 and scrapped in 1960, 
or shortly thereafter. As far as the Duca d'Aosta in the game, she actually feels surprisingly like a very comfortable ship, which is specifically surprising because the game gives you plenty of opportunities to play the other condottieri designs, and they don't quite seem to work all that well in any other tier. But at tier 5, it's not bad. Part of the reason is the standard two reasons that they list here, and they are very much true. The ship is very fast and has excellent concealment. These are major wins for Italian cruisers as a whole, but they tend to not quite fare so well in parts of the game because of their consumable selection. No sonar. Instead, you have a smoke screen that can sort of kind of hide you in a turn, usually just for a few seconds. And in short, it's just not all that good. So, though normally not something worth mentioning, she plays a little bit more like a normal cruiser, meaning that you get a spotter plane and sonar. Now, a spotter plane isn't that surprising, but generally the fact that you are fast and that you have sonar instead can make you a really dangerous opponent if you get into a situation where you can hunt a DD. And to add to that, maybe most importantly, the Italian guns are normally pretty good and punchy, but the Monte Cuculli has just a terrible reload, and the Duca d'Aosta reload is pretty close to half of what you'll experience in the Tier 4 Tech Tree version of this ship. The downsides of this ship is really limited to its survivability. This isn't wholly limited to the rather unimpressive armor scheme that the ship has. It also has to do with the relatively low HP overall, though it does have enough armor to bounce some shells if played right. Your light armor is evenly distributed across the ship, making avoiding damage difficult against targets shooting AP and basically impossible against anybody shooting HE. To the extent that I would say anything else I find really disappointing about this ship, it is a bit on the awkward side. While you don't exactly have bad turret traverse, you would like to see them a little bit more responsive for a ship that's only shooting 6 inch guns. And other than that, I really don't have anything to complain about in this ship. So we'll just move into commanders, and we'll talk about your standard three choices here. First, we'll go with Mimbelli. You can really fix your somewhat unimpressive turret traverse that I was just talking about, and you'll also get an indicator to tell you just how many people are aiming at you. Mimbelli will also help you in terms of both speed and rudder shift, so he's a really strong choice for a nimble kiter. Unfortunately, he'll do very little to improve the performance of your guns, and I'm yet to be convinced that this, I'm not insane option, is really true on any ship that exists in the game to this point, so I probably wouldn't recommend his unique ability here. I think most people are probably going to be drawn to Senzanetti because, of course, all of the offensive opportunities. The Duca d'Aosta can benefit greatly from his skills that help with fire chance, and making these guns even more punchy with AP is an easy choice. Even after that, you do have at least two more choices to make. The only downside to this is that other than the base trait, he's not doing too much to improve the survivability of the ship because the options really just aren't there. Now the base commander for the Italians is Campioni, and as usual, he is an especially viable choice when choosing a commander for Italian cruisers, because you can make this a really, really, really stealthy ship, to the extent that you'll be trying to keep your enemies at medium range, if not slightly further away than that, this ship does tend to get its engines and rudder knocked out pretty often. Unstoppable can keep you in the game in that manner, but other than these two options though, Campione doesn't do a lot of super interesting things to help your ship, but they're all pretty okay. They're definitely not going to hurt you. As we come to stats, I'll be talking about this mostly versus other Italian cruisers, but also the field. And as always, the stats that you're going to see on screen are unmodified with the exception of concealment, which comes with the base camouflage that comes with the ship. As we get into survivability, you have just 29,700 hit points, which is nearly 5,000 less than the Trento, but only about 1,500 less than the average for this tier. The armor here is pretty unimpressive on its face, but actually it's a bit surprising if you really look into it, partially because 
it doesn't quite marry up with the experience you're probably going to have with this ship, and partly because it has so many interesting shapes. The short story here is that bow on, you can bounce six and eight inch shells. So that's other cruisers. Appropriately angled, your upper belt can bounce 14 inch shells, and your main belt, which is actually part of the torpedo protection layer, can bounce anything that you can face. Bouncing shells is a thing that you generally won't do a ton of, though, because HE will generally pen this ship, and either everyone knows it, or they're too lazy to switch to AP anyway, and there you go, Bob's your uncle. At the ranges where you're going to be generally dealing with battleships, they tend to ignore a good deal of your armor too, because the deck of this ship is not significantly more well armored than your average shuffleboard deck. This outer shell protects a very high, very narrow, and inconveniently armored citadel. Don't be fooled here. If you drive around broadside, this thing will be pretty good at catching both battleship and cruiser shells inside the boat. In spite of what seems to be a lot of ship dedicated to torpedo protection, you do get just a paltry 7%, and that happens to be exactly the average for this tier. When looking at artillery here, this is the same setup that you have on the Monte Cuculli. Now these are very punchy guns, and they are just a joy to shoot, if and when they finally reload. Which actually, in this case, isn't a problem like it is on the Tier 4 ship. Which is why this boat feels so much better than the Monte Cuculli, with its completely awful 14.3 second reload. Here you can see, at 7.5 seconds, the Duca de Asta isn't quite twice as fast, but they do feel a lot better. The range listed here is 800 meters further than on Monte Cuculli, but the 14.1 is shortest range of any cruiser at this tier. You do have 25 point seconds on your turret traverse, which is on the high side of average for tier 5 ship overall, but if you include only light cruisers, this is actually the slowest turret traverse for that subset of tier 5 cruisers. You have 2100 damage on your HE, with just a 7% fire chance. This isn't great. If you do go all in with Sanzinetti on improving this, you'll end up pretty much average as far as a fire starter because of your pretty good rate of fire. But as she does come stock, you'll probably want to rely more on your punchy AP shells whenever possible. They do 3200 damage on a Citadel, and when dealing with other cruisers, they are, in a word, bellissimo. Your Italian cruiser comes with Italian torpedoes. They have a good firing arc, so you'll be able to use them in a jam at close quarters, but they're primarily used as extremely long-range area denial weapons. This 12-kilometer range is best in class. They're fantastic at blind-firing corners, but maybe not quite as good at blind-firing Royal Navy smoke. That is any distance away because their extremely low speed means that uh, they won't be there when the torpedoes get there. This 51 knots is nearly the slowest torpedo of any in the game, at least that are launched from ships. But I wouldn't suggest investing too much into these personally because they're perfectly usable for what they're already good at. But in any event, their speed is going to be pretty noticeable. Historically, Italian AA is a bit on the questionable side, and it's not a real strong suit for this ship either. Your overall range is short, and your DPM at 1.2, 3.5, and 4 kilometers is pretty below average. This is one reason you might want to stay at speed in a ship like this, because launching your fighter and dodging, such that it's possible, is going to be your best defense against aircraft. And dodging will be pretty easy to do in a ship like this because the Duca de Austa is, right now, the fastest tier 5 cruiser in the game by half a knot. This makes her faster than two-thirds of the destroyers at her tier, and the 6.7 second rudder shift is more than a second better than average. Though she does turn about 20 meters wider than your average cruiser, this is actually a really good turning circle for such a fast and such a long ship. As we come to concealment, this is really one of the strongest things that we have going for all Italian ships, and Dausta is no different here, because it does have the lowest base sea detectability of any cruiser at the tier, even if it is only by 100 meters. But if you use Mikawa and or Sfirsky, you can make this a very sneaky boat. 
Similarly, detectability by air and while firing within smoke is also best in class and is an advantage that you should really try to use. If you combine this with being a somewhat vulnerable ship, this would encourage you to sometimes choose not to shoot ships if the trade will not favor you, and maybe wait a few more moments for a cruiser to turn just a bit more broadside to you before you let loose with your devastating AP, while it is completely unaware of your presence. Really fun. Coming finally to consumables, the remarkable thing is how unremarkable the Duke of Aosta is here. You have your choice between Sonar and Defensive Fire AA. You should probably choose Sonar, because this will make you a menace to destroyers, again, most of which you're actually going to be able to run down. The Sonar itself is nothing special, having the same characteristics as the Sonar that you're going to find on Pensacola and Alba at this tier. Just that Italians generally don't get this consumable at all. So it does kind of make it special, in a way. But you should choose it equally for the reasons why the alternative is pretty bad. Even with DFAA, this ship is still not intimidating to carriers. For dealing with aircraft carriers, you'll probably just want to rely on the fighter consumable you have here, which is, again, nothing special, but it will generally take out one or two planes. More than likely after they've dropped their payload on you, so use that rudder. And now as we come to the gameplay, we're going to be on everyone's favorite map, certainly mine, home of such dynamic gameplay, Two Brothers. I am going to go ahead and put my commander up on the screen. As you can see, we are looking at Luigi Sanzanetti. Um, not actually my favorite build, but this is actually really, really powerful in terms of getting double concealment and also a lot of offensive capabilities for the ship. Truth of the matter is that Sanzanetti's on this ship because I was re-recording footage for this uh, because I also have to do the Leona review and uh, that should be out shortly, but um, obviously I can't have one person in two places at the same time. And so this is what you're going to be looking at. Uh, in any case, we are going to go ahead and roll out way far to the west mostly just to help create a crossfire. As you can see, we don't have exceptional range. Um, I have not done anything to increase that range. That's intentional. I don't mind having short range on a cruiser because it means I have short detectability on a cruiser. Looks like we have plenty of people gathering a little bit of attention. And we're not exactly uh, gonna be anybody's first choice to shoot at unless they recognize my name So we put some shells out there on the Leander uh, One thing I didn't really mention when talking about armor profile is the distance between your Citadel and your uh, Outer armor actually does make this ship more or less difficult very difficult to Citadel with a Royal Navy cruiser, or at least a light cruiser. Because of the short fuse, uh, it'll usually detonate before it actually penetrates your Citadel. Uh, everything else will completely wreck your life, so just be a little bit careful about that. It looks like we're having a weather event on the ocean there. Uh, lots of smoke everywhere. Uh, I can pretty much shoot to my heart's delight at this point because of course somebody can see that Dallas and um, the Dallas can't see me. It looks like the destroyer is getting taken care of so I am going to go ahead and continue to ignore it. I have AP loaded. He didn't have any hit points. It would have worked either way. Uh, we aim high there for the Dallas' superstructure and we pretty much are going to guarantee this kill by using HE, never mind. You can, you can imagine I was really happy about that shot. So now we've got the Devonshire and it is coming right at me. Um, if he continues to turn, we're going to switch back to AP, hoping 
praying that he he does. We're going to take advantage of his weak front bow. Uh, you can see just the... I love the AP shells on these Italian ships. He is, of course, a cruiser. I am capable of bouncing his shots off my bow. And we managed to do that without actually taking much damage, which is surprising, to say the least. Uh, not always not always a great choice to shoot at the waterline, but things happen. People, people sometimes do things that you don't expect them to. Uh, I'm kind of looking at the Zara with a little bit of skepticism. As you can see, we do have some folks in the backfield. I'm a little, I'm a little concerned because, of course, you're never, you never quite know what the blues on your team are going to do. So I start heading back in part because I have excellent speed. And if I have excellent speed, this does kind of become my problem. I mean, it's everybody's problem if he caps the base. Uh, he is going out of the base, so that's a little bit less pressure on me. And, I mean, we'll help to the extent that we can here. Hopefully without having to go all the way back, because, of course, we're also in a pretty good position to threaten the enemy base, uh, where we are right now. Uh, and you can see we're bleeding a lot of speed in this turn. That's not surprising at all, but we've been turning for a while, and we're still hitting 30 knots. It's probably going to dip just a little bit below that, but one of, the, one of the amazing things about this ship is just how fast it is. My turrets are as slow as they're ever going to be in this particular build. I feel like it still kind of works. It's just not great uh, in terms of turret traverse. You can probably try to do a little bit more than I've done. But I'm completely happy with this build. Um, I, I may end up just leaving Sanzanetti on this because if you got a commander at 14 too, you might as well use him. So right now I can shoot at the Leon. I'm probably not going to want to do this for very long. The thing is, uh, Leon has a lot of guns and they're plenty big enough to hurt me. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna turn and see if I can't increase the distance. See if he doesn't pick any other friends up uh, to shoot at other than me because this could. Oh. Since when has this island been here, anyway? So I hit the island. This is... Sometimes I like to put in intentional mistakes, and I love to tell you that this was an intentional mistake, but, you know, sometimes you're just not paying attention, and you hit an island. It happens to real commanders, and then they get demoted. But nobody's going to demote you in World of Warships. They might send you an angry message afterwards, but they're not going to demote you. So... Now that we've uh, kind of fixed ourselves and we're going to go around the outside of this island, we do open up to see if we can't set some fires. Obviously, you can see our super speedy torpedoes um, miss by a lot. Didn't play the acceleration, uh, but by the time he trains his guns, we're almost entirely behind the island. I'm really surprised I didn't lose my rudder there, but such as life. You do tend to lose your rudder and engine a lot in Italian cruisers, which is one reason why I really like Campione as, as a choice on this ship and all sorts of other Italian cruisers, to be honest. Uh, he is my Amalfi captain. But we've managed to, uh, we've managed to actually bump the concealment of this particular ship, as you can see, down to 9.0 kilometers. You're probably going to be best concealed cruiser at that tier um, in any game that you play, really. 4, 5, 6. 
whoever's in your thing, unless somebody is running another Italian cruiser with, with Campioni, then and you're probably going to be the uh, biggest pizza ninja out there. And so uh, enjoy that. To the point I was trying to make when I hit the island, the great thing about that is that I made a mistake in a situation where normally another cruiser would get spotted. But because the concealment in this particular boat is so good, I was able to adjust and engage on my own terms. Um, just, just a great thing about this particular ship. And I don't know if it's obvious, I kind of like this boat. So we continue to shoot at that Alba. We're doing a real heck of a good job um, not hitting him, but he is slowly taking damage. Uh, we've got tons of hit points left to play with, so... Oh, look at this! I love this destroyer. I'm going to go ahead and sit in this smoke. I'm popping that airplane because, of course, it will help me uh, continue to see both the Dallas and the Alba. We put another super slow set of torpedoes out there. You can just watch as they sail towards the Alba. If he does anything creative, they're not going to hit. Okay, yeah, they're not going to hit. Last shot with HE. We're going to go ahead and switch over to AP. Uh, we have popped our sonar because the Alba has pretty wicked torpedoes, but the Alba is no more. And with our quick reload, we immediately get our shots ready for the next target. Dallas goes down and we win the game. So closing thoughts on Duca de Austa. Though not the most advanced design of the Condottieri class cruisers, I do think it's probably the most playable version that we have in World of Warships Legends. In this case, you finally have a rate of fire that is fast enough for this light cruiser to really do its job. Its turrets are a little on the slow side, particularly considering the small guns and excellent maneuverability of the platform they're mounted to, but you can always do things to improve that. The guns on ships like Yoizano and Monte Cuculli always have been really punchy, but those are the kind of ships that take a real arrow to the knee in terms of their reload. If you see my Duca degli Abruzzi video, I think it's safe to say I consider that ship to be more of a little disappointing. And I think a lot of the reason why I like this ship more is that she's better situated in her environment. The Abruzzi struggles against tier seven ships because she's undergunned at that point, frankly. Duca d'Aosta is shooting at things that she can still really punish being a delicate flower in a mid-tier cruiser, or any cruiser really, is something that's not that surprising. And with her speed and maneuverability, you've really got the tools to actually make this platform work. In other words, I'm a big fan of this particular ship, and I find it kind of a joy to play. In any case, it's not going to be for everybody, obviously. I hope you have enjoyed my thoughts on Duca d'Aosta, and I hope you have enjoyed this little review. And as always, I hope to see you on the next one.